In this video, I'm gonna show you how to find or create your own simplified backing tracks for worship. This will come especially in handy for those of you who have just a couple instrumentalists in your band. If you're like me, we have an acoustic guitar, a pianist, and then just a couple vocalists. And we don't wanna fill in the sound with electric guitars or an acoustic drum set because that is just not going to look or sound natural for the viewer. Instead, what I'm looking for as a worship leader is having backing tracks that are more ambient and electronic. So it's gonna sound full, it's gonna have energy, it's gonna have drive in some places, but it's not just gonna be the sound of an acoustic drum set or a bunch of electric guitars playing in the background. So if you are looking for something similar, keep watching this video. I'll show exactly where you can either get some pre-made tracks that sound excellent for this, or I'll show you how you can produce your own tracks in Ableton Live. My name is Jake Goslin with churchfront.com, helping you lead gospel-centered and tech-savvy worship. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry. I'm recording this video right now just a few days before Easter Sunday 2020. Due to the current situation, our worship service is going to be online only, and our musicians in our band is going to be myself on acoustic and lead vocals. We have Sarah, who's another worship leader, lead vocalist, and then we have my wife Kaylee, who who plays piano, and she also is a lead vocalist. So a three-person band with piano and guitar. And we've had a lot of success the past few weeks in bringing our worship online, having a great live stream, and then also the sound of it we've been enhancing with backing tracks. I've faced this problem where not all of the backing tracks that I already own and have in my library that I run in Ableton sound appropriate for what we're trying to do online. There are two ways I've been going about solving this problem, because as I already mentioned, I want to create that kind of ambient electronic vibe to our music. First, I'm going to walk you through the quick and easy way of purchasing pre-made backing tracks from sources like Loop Community or Multitracks.com. They've created tracks specifically for this purpose. Next, I'm going to show you how you can use software like Ableton Live to just produce your own tracks at home. So first, let's dive into the method that's going to save you a ton of time. You can just buy pre-made tracks. So the only downside to this is it does cost money money, but it's going to save you a whole lot of time and probably sound better than anything you could create in home in your studio. Unless of course you're already a professional music producer, good for you. But in this case, for a lot of us normal worship leaders out there, we just want some great tracks. Uh, check out multitracks.com or loopcommunity.com. So at multitracks.com, they've came out with this new resource called the Living Room Sessions. And what they did is they basically took the top songs that people are wanting to sing right now, a lot of these have to do with Easter because Easter is just a couple days away, and they made some fantastic arrangements for these songs. And I was surprised because I already planned my Easter set and I just so happened to already be doing uh, three of these songs in our Easter set this Sunday. So I'm like, I'm buying all three of these tracks. I already had owned the regular backing tracks for these songs, but it was totally worth it, especially for this Easter Sunday, to invest more in the right track so it's gonna sound great. So what I wanna do is show you like the difference between the original master tracks or backing track files and the living room tracks that I got from multi-tracks here. So here is my Ableton project. Uh, these are the original tracks and these are the living room tracks. So first I'm gonna unmute or turn on the original tracks. So here's what they sound like. Those tracks sound great, but they're really more ideal for a live environment. And now here are the living room tracks, the same part of the song. We are doing this in a different key, so just keep that in mind. It's going to sound different, but just listen to the instrumentation and arrangement. So in our scenario, I took out the acoustic guitar because we don't need that. I also took out the, the main piano. Maybe I'll keep the backup piano in there. Um, and then... All the rest of the the tracks here, like I'll just solo a few for you to for you to hear exactly what's going on. This track is what I'm most excited about, having that percussive element added to it. A lot of the other arrangements that I had set up in Ableton, I would just like take out the acoustic drum set because it just doesn't sound right to have an acoustic drum set in there. But then we had no percussion or drive to the song. So I love how they put this looping percussive track in here. And then here are some of the other tracks. Original piano. Mm -hmm. 
and just a synth bass, very super low tone. You can barely even hear what it's actually doing. But all together. Chorus, two, three, four. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. This is exactly the style that I'm wanting for our stripped down online worship band. So thank you, Multitracks, for making those. Also, Loop Community is making what they're calling enhancement tracks. So here's the song, Raise a Hallelujah. We're doing that one this Sunday, and they don't have these tracks available for every single song yet, um, but I already had the premium tracks for this song. But then when you go over here to enhancement tracks, um, you're gonna see there's an option to purchase those tracks. They're $9 if you play them in Prime, or I think I bought the uh, $20 version to download the files. So let me go ahead and open that for you. All right, same thing. So I have my original tracks grouped right here, and then I have the enhancement tracks below them. First, let's listen to the original tracks. This is for Raise a Hallelujah. You've got that rock sound very true to the original arrangement. Now let's listen to the enhancement tracks. There's a lot of tracks here. It's like, keeps going and going. It's like, nope, we've got, I, I don't even want to count them. There's so many tracks. Turn around, two, three, four. So let's listen to some of them individually. Two, four. Just a simple kick to kind of add drive to this song. Really important to a song like this to have that four on the floor feel. So I love what the producers at Loop Community did. They had a field day with percussion, obviously. They're like, how many how many percussion tracks can I add to this song? Four, apparently. What's great about both the living room tracks and the enhancement tracks is that I was able to just drag them into my Ableton project. And because the, the arrangements were the same, I really had to do no other formatting to my project in Ableton Live. So those are the quickest ways to get the right backing tracks for these types of song arrangements. Now I wanna show you what I do if you can't purchase pre-made tracks. So here in Ableton Live, I have the song, Oh Come to the Altar, and there are no enhancement tracks available for this song or living room sessions tracks available for this song. So I'm gonna have to use a combination of the original tracks that came with this song, um, as well as some additional percussive tracks I'm gonna make in Ableton. First, I'm gonna get rid of all the tracks that I just don't like the sound of. This, three, four, five, six. Definitely don't need acoustic drum set. I don't want electric guitars. I don't want background vocals. Don't need piano. So I'm happy with everything else that's left in here. I really like synths. I like any percussive elements other than the drum set. Um, and then I also like keeping the bass in there. And I feel like that's gonna fit the vibe that we are going for. But the biggest thing that's missing is having some sort of like kick and snare um, instrument that's gonna kind of give us that electronic percussive feel. So what I'm gonna do is create a new MIDI track here. And I'm just gonna call this percussion. I'm going to then go to my browser in Ableton. I'm gonna look at drums here and I'm gonna drag over the 808 kit and drop that onto the percussion track right there. And I have my launch pad um, connected to my computer. So now I can go ahead and start triggering drum sounds. So then next I just take a look at my drum rack and I kind of find which piece of the drum set I have on each button. So I've got the kick 808 and I've got my snare. So I'm just gonna keep this very, very simple. I do not claim to be a professional music producer. You are gonna see that um, when it comes to the types of tracks that I'm producing. But I think that I can at least make some simple beats that are gonna enhance the sound of the backing tracks. And I think you can too, even if you're not a pro at using these things. So then what I'll do is I'll just play the song and I'm gonna just kind of start getting a feel for what type of beat it's gonna require. And I'm not even recording right now. I'm just kind of gonna mess around with it. Chorus, three, four, five, six. So 
So I got the basic vibe of the beat, and don't worry, even though I'm not playing it exactly on beat, we're gonna be able to quantize that and fix that problem. So it sounds like I play in perfect. The other thing though, is I wanna add some reverb to this drum kit, cause you'll notice when, when there's no reverb, it just like doesn't sound very natural, it doesn't blend in with the rest of the mix very well. So I'm gonna go ahead to audio effects and I'm gonna find some reverb. And then let's just do a normal, let's just do a medium hall reverb here. And then watch, listen to this. Sounds horrible because there's like way too much reverb. I'm going to turn down the mix from dry to wet here. So just add some space and there's like so many other parameters we could dial in here too. Maybe the decay time doesn't need to be quite as long. I also like to turn down pre-delay on reverb when it comes to percussion. And there you go. I'm pretty happy with that sound. So now let's go back through and kind of test it out. Chorus. Three, four, five, six. So I'm pretty happy with that sound. And what's cool is we can keep dialing it in even after we record it. So to record it, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my um, little locator right there and then I'm gonna hit the record button. Chorus, three, four, five, six. And then I'm like, no, actually, I don't like that beat. I'm gonna do that again. Chorus, three, four, five, six. Turn around, three, four, five, six. Now that I got my basic B, I'm gonna actually go ahead and quantize it so everything is in perfect time. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click. I'm gonna go to quantize settings, make sure it's on 16th notes, press okay. Now listen Five, to the timing. Six. So you can hear everything is in perfect time. Um, but I also wanna kind of balance out the different instruments um, on, in my drum rack. I think the snare is too loud. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select the snare right here. And then I'm just gonna turn the volume down. Chorus, three, four, five, six. Turn around, three, four, five, six. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so then I would just make my way through the rest of this song and just keep adding my drum track. So let's let's just say, uh, just for demonstration purposes here, we'll go to the next chorus. Bye. And then I'll paste this same beat here on this chorus. Chorus, three, four, five, six. And then when I'm done the song, I'm gonna select the whole length of this track. I'm gonna press Command J to just consolidate it down into one clip so it looks nice and clean and organized. And that's how you go about creating your own uh, tracks within Ableton Live, at least just a percussive track. You can go and record anything else that you'd like if you are a pro when it comes to if you use like a synthesizer or any other instruments, you could really build your own tracks, but it's just gonna take time. It's gonna take a lot of time to get it to sound as good as those living room sessions tracks or the enhancement tracks that I showed you earlier. So there you have it. If you are looking for some stripped down, simplified tracks for your worship band, especially as you stream with a smaller band online, those are the solutions I recommend. Loopcommunity.com in their enhancement tracks, multitracks.com in their living room sessions tracks, or you can just make your own tracks in a software like Ableton Live. I wanna invite you to check out Worship Ministry School Com, where you'll find a whole library of online courses to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry. Our courses cover a variety of topics, whether that is growing as a worship pastor in your theology and understanding of how to plan and lead worship, or maybe it's using Ableton Live to build out all of your projects to run tracks and automation. So check out worshipministryschool.com and join today. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, smash that thumbs up button and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe Subscribe to the Church Run channel so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos to help you grow yourself and grow your church.